What have you experienced in the last few weeks living here? We have been indoors the whole of last week. Did you hear any gunshots and stuff? Yesterday, oh, huh? yesterday in the evening. Yesterday? Yes, in the evening. So like 10 hours ago? Yes. You heard gunshots? Yes, it was around 6 o'clock, 6 to 7. How far away did they sound? Uh, down this way, 5 minutes. Seriously? Seriously. Every day, every day, one shot. They just shoot so we don't even know. I don't even go somewhere, you're just afraid to stay in your house. I look down, these are bullets. Where? Just down here. Oh. Those are all bullets. They didn't clean it up. Hello and bonjour from the Central African nation of Cameroon. I'm not as happy as usual because this is not a happy video. It's about a growing civil war that's practically going unnoticed by the outside world. You see, Cameroon has both English and French speaking regions, kind of like Canada. But here, the English speakers make up just one fifth of the population living in the western part bordering Nigeria. This linguistic and cultural divide has caused tension where the English speakers, known as Anglophones, want equal rights as the French. There have always been the complaint and cry of marginalized the wrong ways, the embezzlement, the, the unfairness of governance and many other things. It all started with the protest of teachers who complained about the system of the Anglophone or the English education which was being changed or which they thought was tempered weak. Then followed the lawyers who complained about the common law system and it boils to what we are facing today. In recent months, the tension has erupted into the brink of a civil war. Nearly a thousand deaths have been recorded so far in the English regions, including beheadings. There have been terrible shooting around the southwest and northwest of the country. People are being treated like more or less like animals. They're burning down houses and kidnapping innocent people. In the town of Boya, people have been fighting with homemade machetes and rifles. Good morning guys, we have woken up at 5.30 a.m. to drive from Douala to Boya, which is in the English-speaking part of Cameroon and the center of the conflict, the recent civil war that's been happening. I'm actually quite nervous right now to go down there, but let's see. Right now I'm out of a little private house, but we drove through mile 16, which is where a lot of the battle was recently fought like weeks ago or days ago, and we saw bullets sprayed on the ground, uh, cars that were burnt and flipped over. It's kind of a ghost town. Everything is completely dead. Every single building is closed. Everything. Hotels, restaurants, offices, schools. There's no people. It's Tuesday morning, so the city should be driving. But uh, nobody's around, and it's really quite eerie and scary. There's police patrolling on every single corner with huge guns, and uh, it's just a wild experience. Some 30,000 Anglophones have fled to Nigeria, and over 150,000 others have escaped to safer parts of the country, such as Douala and Yaoundé. And in the middle of all this chaos, Today is October 7th, the presidential election day. The current president, Paul Bia, is one of the world's longest serving and oldest leaders at 85. It doesn't seem like he has any competition because all the street signs are of his face. This chaos is very unfortunate for the country and we can all pray that it doesn't get any worse. My aim with this video is simply to raise awareness about what's happening because things like this should never go unnoticed. Even though my experience in Cameroon has been limited, it's been very eye-opening and I've learned a lot about the politics of this land. It's a shame that I won't have the chance to explore more of its beauty as I'll be laying low, but I guess that this is all part of the journey.